If you're a creator playing around with AI image and video tools, well, Hicksfield is the one platform that you need to see. In a nutshell, it lets you drop insane visual effects into your videos with one click. Now, I haven't done a video about Higgsfield before, but if you watched my recent AI music video, you might remember me punching that AI robot that took my girl. Screw that guy. Well, that was actually an effect from Higgsfield that I used, and it came out extremely well. And that's just one of the dozens of effects that you can create on this platform. They also just released this new feature which creates video ads literally from one click and it's great for social media posts. Anyway, let's play around with it. I'm going to show you guys where you can integrate these effects into your workflows. All right, first let's have a look at pricing. So I actually selected the pro plan, which is currently $29 a month and I got about 600 credits. For context, an effect costs about 10 credits and a premium ad video costs about 26 credits. So this is the main interface when you first log in, we're on the explore page. You'll see all of the effects here listed. And when you click into one, so I'll just click into the face punch, it will actually show you what the effect is. And you can also click generate. Let's just go back. And down here at the bottom just shows you a visual representation of some of the top chosen effects. Now let's actually go to effects and we'll get a list of all of these, the exact same as before. Now here's an example of one of the first effects. So it's action run and set on fire. And you can see here the person's running and they pretty much catch on fire. Now when you click on generate, what it does, it redirects you to the actual create page. So you can see here on the left and the right, what it's actually done, it's actually selected both of the effects that are needed to generate that shot. All you need to do is really just upload the image and then click generate and you can see here it costs 10. So I actually went with this image from my AI show that I'm currently working on and I did put a prompt as well. Let's press play so we can see how it came out. All right, they're running and everyone just catches on fire. It was actually kind of brutal actually. Let's have play that again. Watch Elon, oh my God. Like he's just like, he just stopped running and he's like, okay, screw this. Another effect that I tested is this building explosion effect and it sort of speaks for itself what this can do. So for this example, what I actually did was I generated the photo of myself and you can see the building in the background. Let's see how it came out. So if I press play, what the hell? But why was there a plane? What? Okay, sorry, let's just play that again. The building explodes, it comes out good. But why was there a plane? What the hell? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. What the hell, Higgsfield? This next one is crash zoom in and the face punch, but you can see here from the different examples that they're throwing an object. So let's have a look at the example that I did. All right, so here's the image of me that I'm gonna use. And what I thought was I'd probably do a pie with cream on top, like how a clown gets hit. Anyway, I'll press play, look how it turned out. You can see there, you know what I mean? Like the pie and the cream, it kinda, kinda came out kinda wrong at the end. But it works. I mean, look at that. Like, just look at how everything like just interacts and splats everywhere. It's just the realism on this and even just the reaction. Like, and obviously it's maintaining the consistency of my character. This is like, honestly, like the results on this is amazing. All right, this next one that I want to show you guys, I actually thought of this one myself. And what I did was I used two different effects. What I used is this whip pen feature, which sort of just pans the camera right to the character. And then you've got the building explosion. So I thought to myself, let's do this suspicious guy looking towards a building like he did something. And then it pans over to the uh, building and you know, I'll just pray. There we go. Boom. So it explodes. It wasn't perfect, but you know what? I did this and I created this effect using two different ones. So I'm kind of proud of this. Here's an example that I did with just the whip pen. What I was trying to go with was this uh, scary looking monster. And you can see here the image of me. It's uh, staring at the actual monster. So I was trying to sort of do like this effect. Let me press play. I'll show you what I mean. So it pans over and then, and then I'm there going, what the hell? Who's this guy? It didn't like, I only did this once, but it kind of understood what I was trying to do. So I like this one. 
Then there's just some random ones. You got this one here of just a head explosion. So I thought I'd do like a shot from my music video where I'm like singing really loud. It's kind of messed up to be. I, I don't know. I don't like looking head like at heads explode. Now this next one that I want to show you guys is using the glam effect. And the glam effect is sort of like when you've got a character and it like sort of just like slowly zooms up on them in slow motion. So when I press play, it's, it just zooms in on him and just sort of focuses there, everything's in slow motion. Before this scene, he's going to be walking, everything's going to be normal, and then I'll hit this effect at the end, and I'll like focus on him, and then I'll like put some text in and say his name, and so I don't know, just an idea. Uh, then we have some flying ones. Th these are actually really cool, so look at this, this one, I mean, look at that, like I'm just flying through in my hair, and just everything's staying consistent. Then there's this pretty much the same one, but they added the set on fire. So look how nice this comes out. He's uh, flying through and then flame. <laughs> oh, look at that face, Jesus. This one here was kind of interesting. It was the eyes in effect. And what I was trying to do, I was trying to get it to zoom in to his eye. And then I was trying to transition into the next shot. Have a look and see how it came out. So it kind of, yeah, it, does, it completely missed the eye and then it just transitioned anyway. But it was still a nice transition. All right, so this one here is the dirty lens feature. So I was trying to go for an effect of me vomiting on the camera lens. And I'll be honest, I don't think anything, yeah, I don't think actually anything touched the lens, but that was only one attempt. But either way, it still worked the vomiting. So that's pretty much it for the effects. Now let's have a look at this new short ad feature. All right, so here we are. So it's pretty much the exact same interface like the effects. And pretty much what you just have to do is just click onto an example. Actually, I'll show you a different one. Let's go to let's go to this one here, which is the city monument. All right, so you can see here you've got this uh, nice uh, perfume, and it's uh, look sort of comes off like it's a monument in a city. But you can also see it's a bit of a time lapse effect going on as well. So a very cool advertisement, especially for a social media post. So the way they did it, this is the input image that's used. So that's just the product image. The start frame is something that's automatically generated, so you don't have to do anything there. And at the end, you can see time lapse landscapes. So that's actually the effect. Now, when we go over here, you'll see that it does cost 13. What I said before, it costs 26. When you click high, you'll see there now it costs 20, 26. All the examples I'm about to show you, uh, I use the uh, the high quality. All right, so here is uh, my example. So I did this sort of uh, water bottle, and uh, you can see there, yeah, you know, it comes out. Look, it came out working really well. I wanted to go with like a transparent bottle. So that effect came out very nice. Didn't like the angle though. The next example is this couch. So you can see here, this was the uh, the input image, but it's just sort of shown underwater. So it's a nice little example. Here's how mine came out. The input image that I used was just an iPhone. And I think I was trying to sort of represent an iPhone being waterproof. So that's why I used that example. This next example is uh, sort of like this frame and you got the stake there and it just lights up on fire. I actually love this one. I just, I like all of the fire effects. Here was my example. So you can see there, I just picked a jacket that's sort of like fire resistant. And yeah, you can see there, it just, I like how it just, it's, I love it. I don't know, everything's just on fire. This next example, it was, um, it's a, I think it's an effect to represent the ice melting. And uh, you can see they've got some sort of ice cream there. My example actually came out better. Have a look at this. So I picked this can and everything just melts perfectly. Like that is so good. This next one's interesting. It's a garden monument and the input image is this packet of chips. So I did the example myself. So what I actually did was I did this loaf of bread and I'll just press play it sort of just like goes so nice, like a loaf of bread. I really picked the right product there. This next one is actually really cool. So it's the helicopter pedestal and you can see there, it's some sort of cereal being carried by the helicopter. And this was actually the input image, which is the box. So I did the exact same thing and I thought like I did a box of donuts and I thought to myself that it would just grab the donut, but it just grabbed the whole box. So it wasn't what, what I was after, but it still came out like really good. All right, this next one's interesting. So it's called Item Swarm. And um, what's interesting is that the input image is the same one from before and it doesn't really look like the candy, but I did this. Have a look at how good my one came out. 
So I did these uh, Skittles, this packet, and the difference is she's actually holding the Skittles and just watch how the effect just sort of comes out. Like, look at that. And then she just, like, if I honestly, I actually think my one is better than the template. Like, let's press title again. So she's holding the packet. The other one's not holding a packet. And then she just, she like, ah, ah. You, if you ever, ever had it, like, if you've ever had a Skittle before, you know, they're like the feeling you get. Ah, no. <laughs> All right, this next one, so it's Jungle Reveal, the uh, the two leaves open. You got some, uh, I don't know what those are, but um, yeah, you can see it's like a little snack. Here's my one, so the jungle is revealed, and I just picked uh, Wicker Wings. Here in Australia, we have these things, it's called Wicker Wings. I think uh, in uh, US KFC, it's like, it's called Hot Wings, but the ones here are unbelievable. You guys got to come here and try them. All right, so this one was actually, like, when I seen this, I was like, no way. This, I, I, I highly doubt this one will work for other examples. So you can see there, it's a packet of batteries, and it's got a family, everyone's just sitting around. So I thought, I'll do it myself. I did, like, a packet of gums, uh, and look at this. Like, the guy is sitting there, and look at all the babies are running, and it's different. Like, oh, my God. This next one was actually one of the good ones as well. So you got the croissant as the input image. And look at that. It's just sitting there on the beach. I did it myself. And I just thought, you know what? We're going to do an ice block because I love ice blocks, especially on a hot day. And uh, look at this. It just turns and the guy appears out of nowhere. The water. I love how the water comes in. So another great example. All right. This one was interesting. So it's a plate setup. And I just thought to myself... All right, so it's something that like it's it's going to be picked up off the plate. The input image kind of confused me. I wasn't really sure what that is. It looks like ice or a drink. So I don't know how that came of that. But my example was good. I think I used a tub of ice cream or something like that for the input image. But he has here's how the result came out. Ooh, look at that. And the the okay, all right. It's kind of messed up because the, the kids are about to be eaten, but it was just co cool how everything was communicating with each other. All right, one last one. So we've got this one here. It's called the Volcano Monument, and it's this drink. It's like an orange drink, and everything's just bursting out. So I did it for, I thought to myself, let's do like a, a chili bottle. And look at that. You know what? It's, this is first attempt. It's so nice. So what are my final thoughts of Hicksfield? Well, the important question to me as someone who creates AI films and videos, is this a tool that I will incorporate into my workflows? The actual answer is yes, I probably will. I'm currently working on that AI show at the moment. So when I do work on it, I'm going to think of the effect and then I'm going to think of what's happening in the scene and I'm going to try to bring it in just to really improve the quality. The price to generation ratio is also really good. I did run out of credits, but I, I was testing out every single effect and every single ad. The price for me as a secondary tool, I honestly, yeah, I think it's good. But that's it, guys. I hope this video helped. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.